everyone, and welcome back to the Thinking Progressive Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Rivers, and in today's episode, we're going to be discussing Trump 2024 and what that means for progressives. To put it simply, Trump 2024 is a, a message of violence and division. It's a, it's a call for illegal activity in the United States in support of a democratically elected authoritarian. Now, today's episode, I want to give fair warning, is going to discuss topics that may be uncomfortable for some viewers, including violence within society. Uh, it's not something that I invoke lightly, but I think as progressives, we need to genuinely consider all potential possibilities uh, in order to develop proactive solutions to how to solve these issues moving forward. The reality of it is, is that Trump's core base, the ones who really hardcore support the idea of a Trump 2024, which is constitutionally illegal, um, they're not going to go away after Donald Trump gets impeached or after he loses the 2020 election or, you know, heaven forbid, he wins the 2020 election and then there's that 2024 election. So, you know, progressives uh, really do have a unique advantage in that the progressive message is, is a little bit more apolitical than the traditional liberal democratic message, uh, which I think positions us well to, you know, bring these people back into the fold of society, to help diminish their fear and hatred of the other. Uh, and that's the kind of ideas we're going to explore today. So thank you, as always, for listening to the Thinking Progressive podcast. Trump 2024 is an initial step to desensitize and normalize violence. As progressives, we would benefit from a more in-depth understanding of why that is and what we can do about it. Language and imagination imbue a touch of infinity into all of us, stifled only by the reality of being advanced linguistic primates. Human beings are context-driven. Language and communication always have and will always be our defining strength. But that advantage comes bound to weakness, as language can influence us beyond the immediate moment. Herein lies our problem. Trump 2024 isn't about one specific plan of action. It's intentionally ambiguous because his intent has nothing to do with making a statement. It has everything to do with building a foundation for when Donald Trump confronts the limits of his power, whether that's through impeachment or the elections of 2020 uh, or, you know, as he would have it, 2024. Trump 2024 as a statement is an attempt to create a mental anchor. Anchoring an idea plays on our subconscious bias where the first piece of information we hear on a subject typically dominates our future decision-making process. Trump 2024 is all about anchoring the idea of Donald Trump as a persistent future leader among his core supporters. So what messages is Trump 2024 conveying without explicitly giving them words? Well, one is the assumption of a Trump victory in 2020. It's a pretty odd strategy as polls from a variety of perspectives continue to show a decline in Trump's popularity. If losing is a possibility for Trump, then progressives should assume alternative strategies exist to maintain a grasp on power, even if that strategy is to create chaos. Alternatively, he may be hoping to insulate himself from the fallout of impeachment. Setting his core base up to believe an assumed victory isn't a strategy to increase turnout, and it's looking even less likely given his recent Ukraine scandal. What Trump may be doing is setting up his core base for a very bitter defeat. A defeat that he'll blame on the corrupt media, corrupt Democrats, foreign intervention, immigrants, disloyal Republicans, among others. You know, you're probably noticing a trend, right? And of course, there's one thing we know he won't blame it on, which is himself. Anger and fear are the defining aspects of the ideologies fueling Trump's more radical base. Consistently reinforcing a 2024 position of leadership is one pathway to reaching a critical mass of anger within them. Progressives should consider what options will be available to us if Trump is impeached or loses the election and refuses to vacate the office. How might his core supporters' anger manifest into action? And what is our visionary message to bring these people back into the fold after the schism. Another possible message within Trump 2024 is to gain support for a third term, one that signifies a genuine shift in American governance and elevates Trump from a sociopathic con man to a genuine authoritarian. Extended presidential terms are constitutionally prohibited, that means they're illegal, via the 22nd Amendment, which limited presidents to two terms with an additional two-year term window in case of succession. So, you know, a president dies, the vice president comes in, that individual is given an extra two years. Eliciting a third term is a dangerous tactic and one that Trump is using deliberately. By placing the concept of a guaranteed 2020 victory into the consciousness of his core base, 
he is attempting to lay the foundation for multiple potentials. The most obvious is that he's implanting the idea that a third presidential term would be both acceptable and normal. This is incredibly dangerous. Trump's stable base is a fervent mix of people who are convinced that the majority of news, science, and perspective they hear is false. The only truth stems from Trump himself. This ethos is fueled by a steady stream of cash from Trump's wealthy conservative base. It's common knowledge that a formal declaration for a third presidential term would create a crisis in the United States beyond anything presently experienced. In reality, we're already here. Donald Trump's strategy is death by a thousand cuts. If Donald Trump and his team can deliver this message over the next five years consistently, we may have to deal with a violent revolution. Such an event would fully recognize Trump's authoritarian desires. Now, I don't invoke the possibility of violence lightly, but what alternatives would a fervent but comparatively minority base demanding a third term for Donald Trump resort to? Data from the FBI demonstrates an increase in hate crimes since Trump's election, and since a third term would be illegal, there really is no democratic compromise. Now, the complacency of the modern Republican Party and Trump's recent history of violence, enticing rhetoric, and criminality also contribute to this theme. Today, we have a rare historical moment where our foresight is just as great as our hindsight, and I'm referring to the Republican Party's wholesale backing of Trump's increasingly cruel and divisive policies. Trump's election was a gift to the wealthy elites presently ruling the United States. And it's one thing to continue the wealthy's perpetual war on the middle and lower socioeconomic classes, but it is an entirely different thing to blindly support initiatives that are directly contributing to a planet-wide climate crisis. The cowardice of the modern Republican Party is astounding. Republicans have also supported the weakening of our elections through inaction on security measures and action to suppress citizen voices locally. South Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, and Kansas are moving to cancel Republican primary contests to avoid Trump facing exposure by other, more sensible Republicans. History will undoubtedly look at the Republican Party of today with great disdain, providing a model for future generations to understand the meaning of weak leadership. What is not certain is how significant the damage will be when all is said and done. Trump 2024 is violence wrapped in the guise of politics. But it's not that different than anything else he's been saying. Calling asylum seekers an invasion, referring to other nations as shithole countries, framing refugees from recently devastated Bahamas as gang members, drug dealers, and very bad people. I mean, the list goes on. The underlying theme is the same. Using language to lay a foundation for anger, fear, and the potential for violence. As progressives, we cannot afford to be blind to the realities that we face. This administration recognizes its consistently weakening position among the majority of the American populace. Its only hope for survival is to create a divide between its core base and the rest of America. A division so significant that it holds the potential to become a callus for a violent attempt at revolution. It's an idea that is doomed to fail, but one that we'd be foolish to ignore. Progressives believe in a pluralistic vision of the future. But if we're going to create a genuine transformation of society, we're going to need to explore ways to break the spell entrancing Trump's base. Failing that, we should prepare for Trump's last-ditch effort to secure his power here in the United States. We owe it to ourselves and our movement to consider this deeply. So how do we frame efforts to mitigate the risk of violence from hardcore Trump supporters while simultaneously keeping pathways open for reintegration into society under progressive reconstruction. Sun Tzu's Art of War provides universal insight onto an initial strategic approach and understanding. Progressives would be wise to apply the logic of not pressuring a desperate foe too hard, giving them instead a pathway to retreat. It is only a matter of time before Trump's most fervent supporters recognize the futile position they have placed themselves in. Our wisest course of action is to provide a path of retreat that is easy, accessible, and free of humiliation. It's not ideal, but our objective is to transform society, not to punish people for momentary ignorance. Progressives need a proactive approach to bridge building with a base that holds a seemingly unwavering belief in Donald Trump. The lies, the blatant corruption, policies directly damaging U.S. industries, and a strategy that focuses on concentrating wealth in the hands of the wealthiest do nothing to dissuade their passion for Trump's America. Studies have shown that their driving motivator is not economics, 
but rather a loss of social status. It's not that they fear any one aspect, such as immigration, economics, or guns. Instead, it's that they, the world is changing and their lifestyles don't fit particularly well into the new paradigm of human thinking and being. Progressives can use this knowledge to lay the foundation for a reintegration program that focuses on addressing these underlying concerns. Bernie Sanders' Green New Deal already demonstrates key pathways towards a tangible solution. Job training, wage guarantees, socialized ownership of energy production and resources, housing assistance, and more. The plan lays the practical foundation for how we encourage buy-in through economic and social benefits and is a model that can be exported to alternative industry verticals as the need arises. But economic buy-in isn't enough. Like many of us, Trump supporters have inherent psychological biases from decades of propaganda that have formed their worldview. The data concludes that Trump's base is more likely to support authoritarian figures, believe in a social hierarchy where the prerequisite to personal elevation is the diminishment of another, and have higher degrees of racial and religious prejudice due to lack of exposures to individuals outside of their immediate circle. To break these biases, we're going to need to include integrative social training within the economic approach. Pulling again from the vision of job training and guarantees described in the Green New Deal, the United States could take an integrative approach to workforce development. The training can assume the dual role of professional experience and cultural integration, connecting United States citizens from various ethnicities, cultures, and locations together. Progressives recognize that by reducing fear of the unknown and by making human-to-human -human connection, we can dramatically decrease hate and fear within our country. Because the political duopoly has poisoned the minds of multiple generations of Americans, our pathways forward must be in a sense apolitical. The policies must speak for themselves. This pathway requires progressives to do a lot of listening while exercising restraint. A united path forward to healing cannot be structured under the guise of one party saving another. It's, it's not going to work. To many Trump supporters, liberals are a supernatural enemy, despite no firsthand experiences with the evil they seek to eliminate. It's going to be frustrating, but keep in mind that we cannot defeat hatred with more hate. Trump 2024 is a subversive call to violence, lost in a sea of confusing and anxiety-inducing propaganda. But Donald Trump is not permanent, and neither is his spotlight. The American people will have to come to terms with our circumstances sooner or later. Progressives find themselves in a unique position to transcend political boundaries and create and implement solutions that invest in our confused and disenfranchised. Progressives also recognize that every human can change the direction of their lives no matter how vile or low they have become given the appropriate resources and education. The task of reintegration isn't particularly exciting or motivating, but it doesn't change the fact that progressives are the best suited people for the job. Being progressive is not a political affiliation. It is a way of thinking about change, and that gives us a distinct advantage to begin the work of building a united front. Hey everyone, Ron Rivers again. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Thinking Progressive podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel below. We really appreciate it. If you really liked it, be sure to share it with your friends, family, etc. on your social media channels, and connect with me directly on our social media listed below. You know, here at the Thinking Progressive podcast, our goal is a little different than most of the progressive media out there. We're not just another news highlight. We dive deep into issues from a philosophical and theoretical standpoint to make people deeply consider some of our most pressing problems. It's our intention that by helping people think through these things in a manner that they're not really used to, we can better develop solutions together. Thanks again for tuning into the Thinking Progressive podcast. We'll see you next time.